Welcome to our van tour. Why, Jess and John, if you're new here, let's show you around. If you haven't seen, we spent a month converting this van after we quit our jobs in the UK. And we've now been on the road just over a month and she has been doing us proud. So when we built the van, we knew we wanted to come on beaches with it. So the first thing I did was put a two inch lift on it front and back. I put some all-terrain tires on it and I put a true track LSD diff in the rear, which we put to test yesterday because we got bogged in the beach at Bremer Bay and uh, it got us out of treat. So well worth the money. But luckily enough, it came with a few bits already. So it's got a front ball bar on it. I put two front spotlights on it, but these don't come factory with a recovery point, so I made a front recovery point as well because we're always going to get bogged. It also came with a, a tow bar fitted already and a rear step and all I did was remove the tow ball and put a recovery point on the back as well. Um, I also fitted a dirty bag to the back. I just put a bit of aluminium on there and um, if we got a bin full in the, in the van or if we pick up litter or anything like that, we can always just chuck it in the back here and it's been brilliant as well. So to get on the roof, ladders are quite expensive and they're hard to find. So I found a simple option is just these little things. They come with boats and things like that, horse trailers, and they're easy to fit and they work a treat. So luckily enough, it came with the roof bars and the roof rack. Uh, I put 360 watts of solar up here. I put the 20 litre water can and the 20 litre fuel can. I put a roof vent in and then I also put the max tracks off the side of the roof rack and the awning as well. So it's pretty snug up here, but it all works brilliantly. So this is our garage. Um, it's under our bed and it's got some holes underneath for the mattress to breathe. Um, it's got loads of compartments for storage. So these two lockers on both sides go all the way through to the back, but this one's only half depth um, because it goes through to some shelves that you'll see when we get inside. This is our Australian shower solution because there's so many outdoor showers here, it's really easy to get clean. It's pressurized, you can rinse yourself off, and even comes in handy for washing the van. This is my favorite seat in the house. I love sitting here with my morning cup of tea, looking out wherever we are. But one of the things that was key for us when we came to Australia was about ventilation. So we've got two Sirocco fans on either side of me, and both of them can either be spun round to exhaust or to pull air in through the front windows, you can leave them ajar. And then the fan we've got over the bed is also an exhaust or to bring air in. So we can really get the air circulating if it gets stinking hot. So we've kept this cabinet low for two reasons really. One is that it means you've got easy access to the front of the cab because a key thing for us in van life is being able to get from your living space into your driving space without having to get out. The other reason is that this lid flips up and you've got access to your cooker. So you can cook a cup of tea, or if it's rubbish weather, you can cook inside, because this comes out and you can pop it up on the kitchen bench or on top of here. But we're in Australia, it's beautiful weather. We want to make the most of being outside. So just on drawer runners, and the kitchen slides out for outdoor use. So you've got, like I say, your double burner gas stove here, and then we've got uh, my tea and coffee supplies and kettle and things up here. And then food storage in this one. And this is all my pots and pans and cutlery and those bits and bobs. So another reason we kept this low is because our sink is just here. Um, and whilst you can stand up in these vans, you kind of have to do a bit of a crick neck. So if you're doing the dishes or whatever, you get a bit of a crick in your neck. So we've done this so that you can sit here and do the dishes and you don't get a sore neck, which works out really nicely. Uh, I've got loads of worktop space here as well. And I use this as worktop space when I'm cooking outside. I've got a massive, great big 110 litre King's fridge. And I have to say, this is the best freezer we've had in a 12 volt fridge. Got loads of space. You still have to pay for each Tetris if you like us and you eat loads of food, um, but it's done us really proud. Under the sink is where our water storage and bins and things are. So we 
have decided differently this time to run two 22 litre water carriers because it means that there's lots of free water points in Australia but that you might not necessarily be able to plug a hose into. So it means we can take out the jerry can, go fill it up, bring it back and away we go. Then for our drinking water, we run these 10 litre spring waters that you just pick up for about four bucks from the shops here. So, and then these ones at the back, just a bit of extra storage in our bin. So remember in the garage, I said to you, one of the compartments is shorter. That is for this storage container here. So we've done it with just a shelf in and it's got these little boxes, which are brilliant because they don't break like plastic boxes might. And they're doubled up. So we've got a huge amount of storage for our clothes as well as this rack up here. So we've managed to get everything in, absolutely no worries. We've even got space in some of the baskets. This is the bed. It is brilliant if you're a bit short <laughs> because it goes long ways. We use it mostly as a day bed and I'll show you later, but this table pulls out and you can stack up the cushions so you can sleep lengthways as well if you're a bit taller. So it just gives you a lot more flexibility with your living space to be able to kind of have a day bed, but then also for it not to take up the full amount for the nighttime bed. So both these seats are dual purpose. Um, we've got storage under both of them, so I'll show you them now. So this one, this is the main part of the, the van. This is the heart of the van. This is where the money's at. So you just lift the little lid off here. And then we've got a 200 amp lithium battery, Victron DC DC 30 amp charger. And then we've got an MPPT 30 amp charger as well. We've got a 500 watt Kings inverter. And then I've just got an accessories point for the cigarette lighter. So we don't really run a lot on 240. So we just use it for charging laptops and things like that. And that works brilliantly. And the setup obviously out here in Australia, you've always got sun, but we never run lower power. So if you're doing a van over here, I'd suggest 200 amps, 360 watt solar. You never have a problem. So this side, this is where the toilet's at. So it's cushions off. And then this lid comes off and then I made it where we've got a section here for the toilet roll and obviously fabric softener and this is a composting separate toilet. We use this toilet in the UK and we think hands down it's the best toilet you can buy. So I mentioned the table earlier, got a couple of options with it. It slides out so when you're in bed you've got a little coffee table or whatever but then also just clips off its runners like that. You pop it into this little runner at the top there. They fold out and you've got a table for two. Um, and this is what I was talking about as well. So we just stack that bottom cushion pops on here and this one goes on here. We wrap it in the blanket and you've got a full length bed. So a few little finishing touches I wanted to show you as well is my spice rack. These were just some cheap little preserving jars from Kmart and it's worked to treat and it has been tested on some corrugations as well. Um, and my other thing is the curtains. So all round I've done these little curtains. They're blackout curtains as well. And they've just got little ties on them that pop out and they slide open. And then we've got a big one that's behind a little curtain hook here that pulls across the front for privacy as well. So. That's great if you're in a place where you're worried about people seeing it. John did add uh, quite a deep tint to the back. So you only need it if you've got like a direct light shining in or we've got the lights on at night or something. So that's our beauty little van. Uh, we've tried to keep it brief, but if you've got any questions about converting a high ace, please just pop us in the comments. We're absolutely happy to help. We also filmed the van build as well. So you can go and look at that. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. 